need to do any transformations to for, to other formats you just can you can download it def by default it creates a uh, different data download formats and wh what is the most important thing it creates api feeds for the each data set so if you go to the next slide please uh, there is the api explorer where you can select uh, options you need or you want and you can even you can even decide that you are interested in a certain area in the city for example or in the in, in the region and it creates api for just that filtered data so when you go to the next slide then i think yeah uh, it creates the feed for you and you can automatically connect to that uh, to the data you can connect it to your app to the solution you are making or whatever you need it for uh, in the beginning we and the, 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 the best about this solution is that they constantly upgrade and improve the catalog each week so if there is a bug or it, if there is some some issue you want with your catalog you can uh, submit your request and they are trying to improve improve it like every, almost every day uh, the the child disease or child sick we, sickness we had with the with the first uh, data platform was um, was that uh, we had all, over 100 uh, data sets uh, but almost 100 of them were just single purpose or single use data sets for example random excel sheets or any any kind of data someone could could scrap from the the the, the, the table they had so we had for example the list of items bought last month or i don't know a list of things that happened last month and it's okay that you publish that data but that's not useful for our developers or for anyone in the it community which is really the main point of having a data portal so i just hub created the perfect solution for us as it was part of our license already you can go to the next slide please and so we decided that go to go for it we talked with um, our colleagues from uh, washington dc and sydney which already use arcgis hub and they had only very good recommendations for us so we so we uh, decided to go for it and now we uh now we are in the last final in the last final uh, stage of um, of developing ArcGIS Hub and um, and going from the old uh, environment to the new one, in November 2020, which is in two months, we'll go live with uh, with our ArcGIS Hub, and we'll go we'll go live with 82 datasets. But I would like to point point out that these live datasets are going to be always up to date and always live i can't say it better it's not like uh, one export from excel or one export from pdf or whatever these are data sets which are constantly up updated at the city level so for example we have uh, data for uh, city street lamps and if some uh, colleague of mine updates the data you can immediately basically see it in the feed which you get in the arcgis app without any special uh, it skills or we don't we don't use it supplier for that and uh, the reason for that is because uh i just have itself he has api which is very very easy to use even for for a layman like we are <laughs> and uh and yeah and another really good uh this is the front page which uh, of our new data hub uh, which should be live in november and the catalog ijs hub comes with the possibility to build your own website without any need of uh, uh coding or do or having it skills so basically this is a low-cost solution for us which is constantly under the control of IT team somewhere in the US, which would don't pay any extra money. And we'll see how it goes. We hope to get uh, next year to get uh, also the sensory data to the to that uh, RGS hub because it allows for that through the through the uh, 
combination of technologies uh, of S3 as well. So hopefully, as you can see, we didn't use any special, um, we didn't use any specific solution from Lighthouse Cities or Cities from the Rugged Ice project, but we have learned so much from them. They pointed us to the right way and I think they confirmed our, our view, our views about how the data platforms should be uh, dealt with, that it helped us to shape the way we go in the future. And we hope it's going to be a bright future. Thank you. A on byl, on byl asi vypnutý, teda. Kolik ho vypnu? Tak se omlouvám. Já jsem se omlouvám. No. Uh, OK, so, so we can start now. Everything is working. So, OK, I, I just uh, said I'm uh, energy manager of the city of Vietomřice, or was before, and uh, my presentation is part of the smart uh, city project called Stardust, because the city of Vietomřice is also like a forward city in this, in this project. So, uh, when uh, we can start with the presentation, Okay, so uh, the f we, can, we can skip to another slide. So uh, the first part will be about some um, energy management, energy policy in the in the municipality. So we can skip it to another slide, please. So uh, we, we set up a municipal energy plan in our municipality, and you can see here that we have some. Yeah, okay. So we we have some uh, we have some goals in our uh, energy plan. And uh, this goal is uh, that we, we would like to save uh, about 20% of the energy uh, to the year 2030. And uh, I'm not sure if it works. There are some animation also. So I, I will control it or? No? Okay. I can control. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, so uh, as, uh, as I can show, so that um, we also evaluate every year this uh, energy plan. So we have uh, the last figures is about 12% uh, of the energy we already uh, obtain or um, get in the in the in the municipality. And after that, we realize that uh, when we prepare the uh, municipal energy plan just uh, for the municipal property, it's just only the small part of the energy system of the whole municipality. And we decided, and it's the another slide. We decided also to prepare uh, like a SICAP, uh, the Sustainable Energy Climate and Action Plan. And it's, it's here. And uh, you can see some figures or goals for the city of Etom in terms of uh, decreasing of CO2 emissions, in terms of decreasing of energy consumption, and in terms of increasing of renewable energy sources in the, in the municipality. So uh, some practical examples or implementation is on the next slide. And we also started in 2015 with the refurbishment of the uh, municipal property in a low energy standard. So you can see here on the picture, it's like a typical kindergarten, which uh, is uh, typical in the Czech Republic. And we were able due to some like a, like uh, uh, implementation of some measures like uh, some deep refurbishment and um, triple glass windows and PV systems and um, and, and so on, uh, we, we were able to obtain about more than 80% uh, of the energy savings in this uh, in this kindergarten. So it's it's normal or it's it's feasible to do such as uh, such as refurbishment also in um, um, some other municipalities or properties in the in the Czech Republic. Okay, and uh, on the next slide, uh, we can see also 
I think you can you can skip soon and uh, for the whole slide because we already obtained some some value of the energy savings and uh, we didn't want to leave this energy savings only in the into the municipal budget and we had some effort to use this uh, safe money also for the triggering of new new measures or implementation of the of the new projects in the city of Itum, as it said so we prepared uh, something what, which is called like energy saving fund and it works that uh, every year we evaluate uh, it's number one we evaluate energy savings for the whole super property uh, we subcontract from this um, energy savings the the cost for the for the energy saving measures and we get some net energy savings and we divide this net energy savings into four parts in the in the budget and first one is that 35 uh, percent of the savings which are like approved savings uh, and measured savings uh, came to the municipal budget 30% is going to the municipal companies or municipal organizations. So we would like, or we try with a bit motivate municipal organization to take care about the energy. So if, for example, you are director of some kindergarten of the, of the school in the city of Itomirce and you behave well in the time of energy issues and you save some money, you can get 30 percent of this energy savings back to uh, to your municipal uh to, to to the budget of your organization so it's something like a motivation in the uh, for the municipal organization 30 percent we allocate to the um, municipal uh, to energy saving fund and so this is just a part of the of the budget of our department and from this money we can prepare some new project and invest into new projects and so on and the last one is this five percent it's um, distributed to the to this uh, to the commission fund and some people which are working on the energy issues are able um, are able to be right, a bit motivated financially uh, for their work and it's uh, approved every year by our mayor so in on the last uh, next slide uh, uh, i will tell you a little bit more about them uh, because as we know already and you also that um, like a smart city project it's uh, most about and it was mentioned also in the presentation is about the integration of some measures so we decided to integrate some old project um, uh, of the pv pv system on the municipal property with some new technologies so i will describe you with a bit more about it so we can go to next slide. So it's uh, the, we had the project from the 2014, and we installed in 2014 about um, about uh, three uh, PV systems on the three municipal property buildings. And you can see some information about this PV system. It's not so important. Uh, the installation capacity was about 80 kilowatt peak, and um, some economic issues and. <clears throat> Uh, through this installation, we were able to use about 40 or 45 percent of the produced ener energy directly in the building. And we decided, and it's on the another slide or on the next slide. So we decided to combine. If we can sk skip the skip the slide, please. So we decided in 2019 and. And no, no, the, <laughs> this one. Okay, so so we we decided in 2019 and 2020 to put also to this PV system. Uh, no, the okay uh, to. Um, integrate into this PV system, uh, battery storage system. So with, with the capacity about 180 kilowatt hours and this uh, uh, charging systems are connected to, uh, um, um, this accommodation system are connected to charging stations. So we improved or we increased the usage of the electricity in the place, not just in on the building, but we use the electricity which is produced on the roof of the building just for the usage of the electricity in the building and also for the charging stations. So now we we are already starting with the operation, but by some calculation or assumption, we will be able to use up to 75 of produce uh, electricity directly in the place. And it will be finished now in uh, September of, of this year. So if um, you will go to Itum University for next time, you will be able to, on the three places, uh, which will be like a public places uh, near the schools or kindergarten, uh to use this uh, charging station and to charge your e-car or e-bike uh 
by 100% from the renewable sources. So it's just the uh, example of the of the project, and I think it's just everything for for now. Okay. So then, uh, Yaroslav, for your introductions and presentations. Um, well, um, we're doing a transition now to an other space because we have two parallel uh, little breakout sessions, of which one will be online. That's about Brno and ECNOVA and the progress and barriers in Brno for improving the data portal uh, and Brno ID. Um, while we'll have an, a physical offline discussion parallel to that uh, about Little Meritje and the smart cities information system, progress and barriers uh, for improving the smart city work. Uh, so if, if everything goes well, um, we will have Esben <laughs> in the other room and that seems to be going the right way. Uh, we know from our speakers that everything is possible. I mean, if 85% energy demand reduction is possible, no problem, then we will make this shift also. <laughs> so I will stop here and hope that we transfer to the other room. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Probably. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Martin Vozák. I'm a GIS specialist working at the Brno City Hall, and I'm in charge of uh, Brno uh, Data uh, Platform. Um, as my colleague said, uh, as, as my colleague said, uh, uh, he he mentioned just some general general. Uh, issues we were struggling with the data portal and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, tell you more about issues we we are dealing with uh, uh, right now um, this is, um, I would like to uh, start with explaining our general approach or general attitude which is uh, that we are focusing on uh, on open data. It means that uh, those data has to be um, publicly available, publicly accessible, machine uh, machine processable, licenses free, and so so uh, many other other aspects related to open data. And we are building the open data portal. Uh, the current state uh, at the Brno City Hall is that there are plenty of data sets. Uh, data sets which are uh, locked in the city offices by each employees of the Brno. So uh, we want to make those data sets uh, open. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, there is so many negotiations between us uh, or my colleagues and those people, those employees of the of the Brno City Hall. We uh, want to pers or we want to make them. Uh, to, to public do, those data and uh, we are persuade them that it has benefits for both sides for them uh, as the owners and for the users uh, for the users who can easily access those data and uh, work with them it's uh, one point um, another point or challenge is that we want to also uh, involve city companies to uh, share and public their own data at uh, our uh, city platform. Uh, it is uh, much more complicated because uh, they have based their own business on their own data. It's logical, but uh, we want to make them, uh, we want to make them or persuade them to, to share uh, their own data with us and uh, to public them on, on our data portal. 
so far we had uh, like five or six good uh, examples of uh, sharing the private company's data at our data portal and uh, both sides uh, were were fully satisfied with it uh yep another 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 issue or uh, challenge uh, right now uh, it's more technical that uh, we have to establish uh, the connection between our portal and national open data catalog uh, which is the necessary condition uh, to make our our uh, data portal uh, live uh, because those data are coming then to the national uh, open data portal and from the national open data portal it comes to the european open data portal so right now we are building feed the, that means that those uh, catalogs will be fully synchronized and uh, data will be harvest, harvested between uh, between each other. Uh, another issue is that uh, it is more, uh, let's say, political. Uh, we want to, uh, or we are uh, following the open data directive from the from the European Union, which uh, came in our legislative or which will come to our legislative next year probably or will be, will be implemented and this uh, direction it identified so-called high value data sets which should be uh, published uh, like prior with high priority so we want to be ready for this implementation and try to identify uh, those data sets uh, as well um, another another uh, challenge is let's say more technical robert already mentioned that we are uh, dealing with the sensory data uh, those problematic problems is like uh, growing uh, it, i mean that uh, there are so many uh, sensors which uh, like are in the city uh, let's say meteorological traffic sensors and we want to integrate those sensors to our uh, city data platform. Um, that we we bought a server which uh, allows us to analyze, process, uh, store this data, and make them uh, public. Um, the problem is that uh, this this issue is um, much more uh, technical. There is so much programming, coding and we are a uh, little bit underemployed in this field so we would uh, be happy if some guy <laughs> will uh, will help us with this uh, with this issue we are also testing some sensors or experimenting because it doesn't mean that a uh, higher price doesn't mean a uh, higher higher quality or uh, higher reliability so uh, we are also experimenting with this i think uh, this is all from my side i'm looking for your uh your questions okay thank you very much martin for your interesting presentations um just in case you don't know if you don't know it yet uh, i leave you the link uh, to the bruno data portal in the comment section on the left side on your screen uh, as my i must say is a certainly a very fine job and it's absolutely worth a look um, and also a reminder to the audience, you can send your questions, comments, remarks, contributions, anytime you want to the Q&A section Not so much. Yeah, on the left side of your screen. And I will read them out loud for everyone to hear as soon as possible. OK, so now um, I hand over to Svetoslav Mihailov, policy officer at the European Commission in the unit for smart mobility and living at the European Commission's Director General for Communication Networks, Content and Technology. Uh, Mr. Mihailov, if you want to comment anything, uh, make some remarks or give your expert opinion on what Martin has just shown us, please go ahead. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm happy to see that uh, actually the follower cities are doing something. They're really replicating solutions. They're really going for it. For it which was the whole goal of this Lighthouse project that we created and uh, funded. Now, one thing that I noticed is uh, that we arrived at the real-time data, so the sensory data, only at the very end. To be honest, the work that we've been doing for quite a while was really focused about on, on the Internet of Things and real-time data that can be shared 
for really delivering services that are based on real time. Even the things that were mentioned, yeah, such as meteorological, etc., even though this probably is not to the second, this would be an autonomous car that has to react within the milliseconds, one or two milliseconds or half a millisecond or something. The, the, the meteorological one, probably 15 minutes or one hour will be fine, but still it's, it's more or less real time and nothing to do with the data sets that were mentioned that were blocked and locked in by the different employees in the city hall and the municipality. And this is where the difficulties lays, and this is where we have been working for standards, implementations, piloting, and so on and so on. And we really encourage more work in this, in this direction. And this also refers to the energy that we saw a presentation early on. I mean, if you wanna send it to the, to the city platform and to be able to combine with another services, again, you need real or almost real time data, et cetera, et cetera. Also, the fact that when we're talking about the platform being SICAN or, or uh, the, the hub there, the um, RGS hub or whatever, which I'm not super familiar with, from the commission, we were trying together with the other stakeholders, we were trying not to be hyper prescriptive. So it's perfectly fine that you choose this or another solution. We were trying to focus on the minimum set of interoperability points that we need, standards, etc., that would allow interoperability of application from one city to another. So what is the internal works of the platform? We were not prescriptive about this in order to be able to open the market, to create competition, to make it easier for already legacy systems, install applications, etc., to coexist. But what is important for us is that applications from one city can be ported to another one. And normally, each time we were launching a call for this Lighthouse project and we were discussing with them, we were making it clear for them in the info day after that, when the project starts, et cetera, et cetera, we're making it clear that we really want to see this portability of applications. And then of course, if these applications are based on the same kind of APIs, then if you swap internally, independently with what in the internal works are of the platform, then you still be able to use the same applications. If the North and Soundbound interfaces are the same, agree this minimum interoperability points and mechanisms, then it would still work. And like this, you're avoiding lock-in, which was important for us. So ready-made, CCAN or develop, tailor-made, etc. that's that's uh, for us, it's all the same. So this discussion point for us was fine. Now, we are working together with the municipalities and the other uh, stakeholders to address all the different obstacles. Um, and they include Yes, they do include the technological obstacles where I was talking about standard, this mean vulnerability mechanisms, and then the EIP itself work the, in the action cluster integrated infrastructure and processes. We developed standards about the urban platform that can be also consulted and also set these high level requirements in order for it to be interoperable, avoiding lock in, et cetera, et cetera. So we developed these things. Uh, we're also looking, yes, the openness of data we're looking at. Normally, this is addressed to a great extent also by the certain legislations of the Commission, which are either in development, need to be improved, or are already there, etc. So it's a whole framework. And we're looking into this. There is a group that is looking in general at legislative obstacles. So I think all these regulations, etc., fall into this category, legislative obstacles. Uh, then we have, uh, we're looking at uh, financial obstacles and uh, instruments that are existing, how they can be combined, how they can help national, European, etc., etc., local that can be combined. We're looking at capacity building. We're looking at what will be the um, KPIs, the, the indicators that we can use to judge our advancement, the digitalization, etc., the transition, digital transition, and so on. Now, to address all this, apart from the work that has been done here in the EAP SCC and still being is ongoing, etc., we have also created for what concerns the digital, and here the platform falls into this digital transition, digital sphere and part. We have created the initiative Living in EU, which is working on these different strands that I mentioned in order to overcome all the obstacles. And of course, uh, all the cities are encouraged they are building up on the work in the IP they are working together with the IP so all the cities that are here concerned Berna etc are encouraged to, to get involved 
and to help that we we remove all these obstacles to the digital layer within the city, the interoperability layer within the city. I don't remember what else was said um, that could be interesting. Uh, the data sets I already mentioned, it's good to have this yeah, multi-use, multi-purpose data sets that are standardized based. And there, when we talk, so on my side is technical standards, what I said, the APIs and so on. This is really for the platform interoperability, but at the same time, of course, well, we also have ontologies such as the side of ontology that we developed, mm -hmm. the data models, but also the format of the very data, we're also working there. And again, we're trying to make it um interoperable and comparable among the different sectors and so on so that's why we have also a data unit within digiconnect that is looking into these things and all the legislation literally there is a data strategy for the commission that we have uh published on our you know it was announced etc um and working towards uh, european data spaces uh there was what else was said uh was the fox yeah the private industry, catalog. I think these are the things that that I have marked from the from the presentation of Brno now and uh, and in the plenary session that we heard. So maybe we can make it more interactive now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it has been a very inspiring uh, contribution. At this point, uh, as Mr. Mihailov said, we can proceed with the audience engagement. I don't know if we have any questions yet. No. So, uh, I do have a question for uh, Berno. It was made uh, in the previous presentation by Daniela Torres. Is data accessible for local startups or developers to build new solutions? That would be the question for Berno. Uh, I think in general, definitely, definitely yes. Uh, we are uh, in general. We are. We would be happy if some uh, startups will uh, ask us about data or or those data you can find easily in data.brno.cz. So so yeah, feel free, feel free to to download to work with it. And uh, if you have any questions related to uh, some data sets, just 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 uh, write us or or ask us directly okay thank you and so okay thanks Daniela says thanks and I have a question myself also for uh, Bernard in the uh, in a ruggedized uh, replication report the colleagues uh, from uh, the Bernard city municipality uh, said that they uh, gain valuable insights from their counterparts in the lighthouse city of Glasgow uh, on a study visit to help implement the open data platform. Can you say to what extent it helped? Uh, uh, so to say, uh, what challenges, what hurdles seem much easier after that uh, study visit? Um, uh, thanks for this question. Um, my colleague already mentioned it a bit. Uh, the, the general output of this visit was that we uh, skipped the solution of Seeken, Seeken data storage because they already were familiar with that and they they just uh, went out uh, of this solution uh, another another output of, of this meeting was that uh, they had many uh, let's say applications for for uh, city, cit for citizens which uh, or in general we get inspired by G some GIS uh, application which they they already created uh, in in the city of Glasgow so we we uh, just uh, co copied those or replicate this uh, this uh, GIS uh, maps or applications to 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 our data portal but the the, the main output was that we we uh, just skipped the the CCAN and uh, moved to the ArcGIS hub, which uh, suits us uh, much much more well. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I see. Thank you. Um, also, it seems that the audience is not engaging with us, so I keep asking myself uh, questions questions to both of you. Um, I would ask uh, Mr. Mihailov. Uh, if uh, you have seen any differences uh, between um, the lighthouse cities and the fellow cities approach uh, with regard to the urban data platforms 
any major differences? Um, to be honest, I haven't looked in this kind of way to really split them in, in Lighthouse and followers and how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I'm to give opinion, I, of course, because the funding was there for the Lighthouse project, and especially the first several calls, we were really, it was part of the call that they have to deliver on urban platforms. Then, of course, they had all the funding and all the, the kind of, uh, not motivation, but I don't know what the word to use, within the project in order to deliver it. So, so they, of course, they would install this platform according to, more or less according to the requirements that we were, that they were given within the uh, call for proposals. Of course, the follower cities have to manage it in a different way, not having the same amount of funding uh, and testing it. Everything was coming towards the end or after the projects, etc. So, of course, it's it's a even so. There is the platform, but of course, you use it in order to deliver our services. And then again, the the, the lighthouse projects had the funding for all these other infrastructure, equipment, testing, and so on, whereas the follower cities do not have. So from, from what I've seen, it seems to me that mm -hmm. the follower cities, of course, are less less advanced than the, the lighthouse cities, just for the very fact that this was not part of the project. They were funded. They were not expected to deliver this with the work packs, etc. So of course, they have these difficulties. Um, and I'm thinking the same is like because I have on my mind the case of Sofia, which is also a follower city. And now they have, they're starting, so they're also replicating. They're starting building a platform, buying a platform solution. But they really are struggling again with the funding. They, they have some, but it, it's a struggle. And, and they're behind the, the leading city, like Lyon and Munich, et cetera, in this project mm -hmm. that, that had platforms a long time ago. and, and they have connected a lot of services on them, etc. So I, I see this kind of two speeds, but it's logical. And very often you need to see the, the lead cities are also bigger, richer, and so on. So so all these things, all these different reasons are piling up in order to, to show this difference. But having said that, the other thing that I've noticed is these follower cities are kind of they bring the dynamism, the, the youth into the whole, the, the, the innovation. The, you see, like looking, okay, where can we find a solution? This one is not for us. It's too complex, too expensive, too whatever, too, too not uh, flexible enough, etc. So, okay, let's look at Washington. Let's look at somewhere else. So this kind of dynamism, of course, we would prefer that all you always align on a European level and we have uh, our recommendations, etc. in this respect. But this kind of dynamism and innovation, innovativeness is coming more pro probably from the follower cities. Due to all these obstacles, they are kind of forced to, to move faster with more difficult situation, etc. Okay, thanks for thanks for your answer. Uh, so still no questions from the audience. Uh, maybe it's the, <laughs> it's the hour after lunch. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, so another question for uh, for Martin. Um, it would be about regarding the previous uh, resources or systems already existing in the city that help build the open data platform like for example uh, existing data systems ICT uh, GIS uh, on site where did all these systems were they easy al easily aligned with the replication uh, approach I mean uh, did you quickly find synergies or was it the opposite okay um Thanks for the question. Uh, I would say that um, we had so many uh, passports in our uh, city. And uh, the point was that we want to uh, create services uh, which will be uh, able to, to uh, public uh, many standards like uh, API GeoJSONs and uh, and other 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 serve, uh, other outputs other formats so this is one point we are we are we are doing right now uh regarding to the uh, other other systems in the city uh implemented or integrated in our data portal i would say that uh, we cooperate with uh for example 
uh, city police and their their systems, uh, and we want to integrate it to to our data portal. Then and uh, with many other services provided by local um, local companies and uh, city institutions. So um, in general. I would say that uh, there are many systems, but uh, we have to uh, pick up some uh, which are like more most useful for us. So uh, we most of the time we we just we only uh, pick some uh, some services and integrate them them to to our portal. And doesn't matter if it's from uh, a local company or some city institution or from citizens. We just cooperate with 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 uh, everyone almost. Okay, and did you find it difficult uh, to integrate this, uh, this system or not? Uh, in the new platform we are building right now, there are many uh, connectors which we can, uh, which are standardized like uh, API, JSON feed, XML uh, feed, and so on. So uh, this this server is able to communicate with with uh, various types of of, of services and uh, uh, other other systems. So. Uh, it's much easier than than before uh, when was necessary to to uh, store those uh, services in the CCAN uh, catalog, and uh, then you have to manually download it if you want uh, to work with with some kind of data. So uh, nowadays, it's much much easier to to integrate the various types of services or data to to our uh, data platform. Oh, okay. Thanks, uh, thanks for your answer. Okay, finally we have a, a question from the on, from the audience. Uh, I have a question for the first speaker. No, the, the speaker from 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 you know, it's me. It's uh, Daniel Gasson, the speaker. The first speaker is Martin from uh, the city of Brno. Uh, thanks for your good presentation on your very nice, well advanced replication approach. Uh, now Ragged Ice is four years into the project, and I am curious about your process learning so far. What elements of the original replication approach worked well and brought the most impact in your fellow city? And which elements didn't work out uh, is original, originally, though, due to the differences? Uh, for example, differences in the local context of both uh, fellow cities and local cities. In other words, if you would set up a new replication process, what would you do to this? What would you do the same or differently? That's a, a, <laughs> a very long question. I, I intend to sum it up. So what would you do uh, differently? What what do you have learned? Uh, what would you do that it's uh, useful to do it the, the same way? Martin, go ahead, please. Wow. Is, is a, OK, uh, maybe I will separate it to to uh, each part okay. um, I, I can only talk about the data field so mm -hmm. uh, uh, because the rigidized project has very um, many different uh, parts uh, and uh, so on so I only can can talk about the, our data platform and what we are uh, doing oh, maybe, excuse me, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Maybe just a general overview about uh, what was useful from uh, from contacting uh, the Lighthouse City to replicate and uh, what. Uh, uh, okay, okay. In, in general, I would say that uh, those uh, main cities, uh, Umeå, Rotterdam, uh, Glasgow, uh, were much uh, farther with, with their solution. So in general, we we uh, pretty well uh, implemented their solution because uh, they were on a higher level. So <laughs> it's uh, necessary to say um, what works well was really the discussion between their experts. Uh, it doesn't matter if from Rotterdam or uh, especially Glasgow, uh, and to talk about the solutions they implemented and which way they were chosen so far uh, because we were on the beginning with uh, with uh, implementation or um, building our solution building our infrastructure data infrastructure so it was uh, pretty good for us to to uh, discuss uh, which way uh, 
which way we should uh, choose. So uh, that was uh, the biggest impact for us. Uh, it's also good to say that uh, from the guy, from guys from Glasgow, we are still in touch. Uh, we are um, change, we are still mailing and uh, mm -hmm. uh, messages. Uh, so and also with other cities all around the europe we are still in, in touch uh, not even from from rajadized but uh the 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 discussion and the sharing the knowledge is the the best best part of of, of the, these projects in general no oh, okay and and what about the difference in the in the local context has it been a, a problem at some point or, or not um uh yeah definitely uh it's it's based that we uh, we in the Brno uh, in the data platform we are uh, the GIS specialist uh, we are specialized for uh, spatial data and uh, in in other cities they uh, more they are more uh, focused uh, or building on building ICT infrastructure in general so i would say that this is the, the main difference between between uh, uh the city of brno and other other cities because we we in the department of brno are our geographers or gis specialists on the or, or we are familiar with the spatial data so we were mostly focusing on on the on the those spatial data sets and build um, to to make the infrastructure uh specialized for for the, for those spatial data and other this, I would say that they were um, more into building the complex ICT ICTs uh, uh, systems uh, instead of, of focusing on some some uh, special field. Great, great. Thanks for, for your answer. I hope that uh, that answers the doubts that uh, Roel. I hope that I'm pronouncing it uh, fairly uh, well uh, asked. And we have another question from Daniela. Um, no, that's not this one. This other one. Okay. Okay. Um, she says that uh, in at ECLE, some cities would like to replicate the development of urban data platforms for increased energy management in buildings. Uh, can you share some experiences of managing energy data in the platform? Uh, in Brno or some other cities that you know of, and how the process of capturing energy data took place in case you uh, have an answer about uh, the previous question. Uh, okay. Um, I would say we are not working with, uh, with uh, those uh, energy management in, in the buildings because this is still far, far away from, from uh the state uh where we are right now i only know that in rotterdam they are pretty good at it uh and they uh they established uh, the special platform uh where they are monitoring the the building energy systems uh which is quite uh quite nice to, to, to see, but, but uh, right now we are uh, focusing more uh, to build uh, the infrastructure uh, to, for us, which is like basic infrastructure, the basic data infrastructure for us. And this is probably the, the farther, farther step for us to, to maybe implement or copy the, their solution of uh, energy build, uh, uh, to, to, to burn out. To replicate it, but uh, so far we we do not have uh, experience with. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, as we're approaching the end of this uh, uh, workshop, um, okay, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Mihailov uh, whether uh, he has uh, general advice or comments uh, about the. Open data platforms, uh, open data platforms, sorry, in the in the in the cities. And uh, uh, an additional question would be if you if you if you at the commission uh, consider uh, uh, or regard or view differences regarding the information that is managed in these uh, data platforms, for example, energy or.
personal data and, and so on. Yeah, so uh, the advice, again, I started, I said also in my previous comment, for, on a technical level, standards, etc. cetera, we, we have worked, as I mentioned, within the extra cluster of the EIP. So we have created a standard that became a standard of DIN, and then from there to ISO, ISE, ITU, etc. was brought. So this, then based on it, we have developed in another project, Synchronicity, the minimum interoperability mechanisms, where again, we were talking, it was mentioned JSON here. Yes, JSON LD, I suppose. JSON LD is the base of NGSI LD, which is the API that we recommend. And it's standardized by Etsy as well. So for this kind of, so we advise them to follow this kind of standards. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, uh, what were the, so one was the advice to the cities. Of course, we want them to get engaged in the, these initiatives that I've mentioned. And then from there, we have also for up until now, the projects that I mentioned, I mean, the, the Lighthouse projects, and then this synchronicity large scale IoT pilot, the Espresso project that created this document together with the Ashland cluster, et cetera, which was part of the family of Lighthouse projects SC1, uh, uh, no, together in the same SEC family. Uh, etc. All these were part of Horizon 2020. Now we're going into the new framework period. So of course, all the cities now can apply for funding under the new financial framework. And to, to there, talk in a second. I just need to wrap up. Okay, we have an interruption here. Yeah. So, so yeah, please continue. Uh, yes. So there we have. On one side, Horizon Europe, which is the combination of Horizon 2020, and within it, we are preparing calls also for, again, for platforms, but kind of next generation. We want to see the further development there, coupled with digital twins and all the other developments. We have some money for coordination and support, etc. So within Horizon Europe, there is a mission on climate neutral and smart cities, which you have heard many times today about these days as well, and you know well. So this is on the side of Horizon Europe, research and innovation. Then at the same time, we have the new program that is introduced with the new framework period, which is the Digital Europe program, which is about deployment and capacity building. And there as well, there are a number of activities, including urban platforms, including the AI services that will be running on it, including digital trees, including data space that will be built with the data on a European level, et cetera, et cetera. So all these things will be part of it. There will be funding. We want the cities to put their heads together and to apply as a consortium, for example, for urban platform for procuring such a, such platforms. There are money into the, there's certain money for in, within the Connected Europe facility, the second edition, which is starting from 2021 with the new framework program uh, on 5G, on operational digital platforms and so on, in energy that you mentioned, etc. There are the regional funds, that, all, that can be tapped into. There is the recovery and resilience fund that can be tapped into. And there, of course, the city should be very active to talk to their national governments to include this in the programs, etc. cetera. Uh, probably I'm forgetting something, but this, you see, there is a whole family of, of uh, funding opportunities. So our advice is to go for it, to help us to, to achieve the maximum what we have planned. So that's one thing that you were asking about the different data, I think in the platforms like energy, et cetera, or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, if there's any differences in the in the management of the of the information. No, our idea is that the data should be using the same interface APIs, the same way of magic, in order to be able to combine it. The same ontology mm -hmm. that the question started now. It was just released also for it was initially created for energy, now it was released for then for cities, now for automotive, water and so on and so on. So we want this kind of uniform solution in order to be able to create services from the different sectors together, combined service, because you can think of, of a service in the, I don't know, say 100 services in the energy area. But if you combine mobility and energy, you'll come up with uh, 10,000 maybe, because the very com combination will spur the possible the possible service that will appear. So for us, we really want to see that all these uh, data solutions for the energy, mobility, health, uh, waste, uh, water, etc., all these areas, follow the same principles technically, ontologically, semantically, data-wise format and so on, in order to, if you want some type, maybe using, yeah, the same connectivity probably, et cetera, like the 5G and so on, in order, first of all, to decrease the cost of deployment, to increase the, 
commodization of the whole solution. Uh, and then, of course, to, to allow these portable cross-sector services in order to proliferate. And there, of course, we can grow the local ecosystem because it is good to, to build a, tech, a digital solution, a platform, etc. This engages some IT people, this engages part of the community. But if you create this ecosystem, these possibilities for, for services and so on, then, then you engage the whole, the whole uh, ICT ecosystem with all these startups, etc. And then you push the economy. So this is our kind of goal. And of course, we want to achieve the cutting edge in this ICT with the whole process, because Europe is kind of not really trailing the, the other two uh, superpowers in the technology, which are the, the US and China, that we want to be to do it our way and to be the leaders. We have been in the past. We want to maintain this and to bring it to the future. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your for your answer and for this uh, great piece of advice. And um, okay, Royal Way is uh, answering uh, your uh, is thanking your response, uh, your answer from before, Martin. And he says that uh, he understands that especially the relationship building between city experts has allowed you to learn uh, directly and find each other also uh, directly. Well, I can I can answer that. That's that's, uh, that's absolutely true. No? It's one of the main uh, pillars of replication is to have this uh, to build this relationship and to work together to learn from uh, from each other and uh, to go ahead with the with the replication process uh, maybe with a uh, with a uh, human touch. Uh, I don't know if you agree, Martin. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, I don't know if we're running out of time um, uh, before we are kicked out. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Martin and the people of Brno and Svetosla for sharing uh, their views with us. Thanks uh, also to the audience uh, for a very nice season, session. And before heading back to the lobby, I just want to remind you that uh, recordings of the session will be uh, be made available online. You may also contact uh, directly the participants for further interactions. And that uh, is all. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ciao. Yep. Bye. See you.